Thank you, uh, Toastmaster and my fellow Toastmasters and also guests. I know that this is a safe space, so I know you won't judge me when I admit that I may have recently told a 10-year-old girl that she should be hit in the head with a volleyball. It was in jest and definitely not my finest adult moment, but context maybe matters here. First of all, I was doing something very outside of my comfort zone. My daughter signed up for a volleyball league through the city and she was super excited and it was her first organized sports, sports experience. I myself had many good memories of playing volleyball during my youth, so I was really excited for her. Then, a couple of weeks before the league was to start, we parents were informed that they didn't have enough coaches. So they'd have to cancel the team unless there was a parent willing to coach. So there I was coaching a beginning girls volleyball team. And there she was, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at four foot nothing and 50 pounds of stubborn preteen girl fury, Charlotte. Let me give you an example. When I taught the girls what a ready stance looked like, and, and a ready stance is basically your legs are shoulder width apart and your knees are bent and your arms are extended in front of you and you are so low to the ground that you could practically tap it with your fingertips. So one by one, I lined them up for a drill and, and they hunkered down into their low stance and their hands were at the ready in front of them, but not Charlotte. She traipsed to the front of the line and she stood there like a defiant palm tree in the breeze. Charlotte, let me see your ready stance, I said. And she cocks her head sideways and she says to me, just throw the ball. What does this have to do with this leadership module? Well, in this Toastmasters project, you get to take a quiz that helps you to understand your primary leadership styles. And I was not very surprised by the results. Coaching, democratic, innovative. This was, this was pretty true. And in fact, I could attribute so many of my life and career achievements to, to these things. While I don't think of myself as a coach, I do love learning. And by extension, I love to share things with people that are around me. And, and I want other people to feel that same joy that I feel when this problem that you've been turning over in your head and gathering scraps of knowledge and, and combing through evidence. And then this moment when the light bulbs turn on and, and it all comes together. And also, you know, when you can get people in the boat rowing in the same direction and everyone pitching in to achieve this, this luminous vision and slay those status quo dragons, it, it really is magical. It gives me a bit of a high. And so as a coach, my dominant style of leadership, it served me pretty well. I loved seeing these girls who were so committed and eager to learn and willing to take risks. They, you know, contorted their little selves into these unnatural stances and they shuffled around like sand crabs and they played these silly games. And in the end, they improved their skills. They came together as a team. And they had so much fun. So my primary leadership style was very effective in a lot of ways. However, it's also true that my primary leadership style is less effective when a team is averse to change or when time is limited or the team is lacking in expertise and, and when that team is risk averse. And so there she was, my leadership kryptonite incarnate. Charlotte. She was completely averse to change. We had limited time and she had limited experience and she was definitely not inclined to take risks. And if I'm honest, as a leader, 
this is not the first time that I've had a project, a goal, and a crunched timeline with team members who were averse to change, not inclined to take risks. How do I manage? How do I manage when time is tight, when I have a boat of team players excited to row into uncharted territory and eager to exchange skills and ideas with one another, and one or two risk-averse, change-averse folks who would rather plant themselves like palm trees and weather the storms from where they are. A Charlotte, if you will. I leave them behind. And until this module on leadership style, I had not realized that about myself. With Charlotte, that meant that I stopped correcting her. I stopped waiting for her. I encouraged her, but I stopped investing in her. And instead I focused energy on the rest of the team and ensuring that her attitude didn't torpedo their morale. But it was so painful every time I had to rotate her onto that court knowing that she was just going to stand there and do nothing. To see the girls so proud when they served it over the net only to lose the ball when the opposing team sent it back over to Charlotte. It broke my heart. So yeah, when Charlotte said to her team that they shouldn't move to get under the ball because they get hit on the head, I said, no, it's only gonna hit you on the head. Am I proud of trading barbs with a 10 year old? Nope. Am I recommending this course of action? Absolutely not. As I reflect on my coaching experience and this module on leadership style, I wish I could tell you that I now had the fortitude to deal with this situation in the future. That as a result of this experience, I am ready the next time I come across my next Charlotte. But I most definitely am not. So what I have learned from this project is that my dominant style of leadership is surely a strength, but it also creates a blind spot for me. And that blind spot is something I'm interested in figuring out how to better manage. And so while I'm ending this module, I'm finding that this is just the beginning of my understanding my leadership style. Round of applause. Got a clap. Go off mute if you want. Yay! <laughs> Yay, there you go. Cool. Um, well, thank you for that wonderful speech. And we will now take one minute to give feedback for Bianca. And you can do that privately, please, via Teams or Zoom uh, direct message to her. So one minute on the clock for the timer, and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, that should have been about a minute by now. Yeah, okay. no problem. All right, you're good. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to go ahead and move into our second speaker of the day. It, this will be from Marco Gordillo. Should be saying that hopefully correctly. And he is very excited to be beginning his Toastmasters journey. In fact, he's going to be giving his icebreaker today. Uh, so this speech is part of his innovative planning path pathway that he's kicking off, and he's going to talk about reaching his summits and applying Toastmasters to that journey. The title of his speech is My It's a Travel Line. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Marco for his icebreaker. Now, can you hear me? 
Oh, I was trying to speak and it was muted. <laughs> well, let's start with this. So, hello, my fellow Toastmasters. I want to share with you a story from my childhood. I was about six or eight years old. For some reason, all my childhood stories happened when I was about that age. Well, anyway, I remember my father taking me for a hike around the Ista Cihuatl. The Ista, that's how I call her, it's a mountain located right in the center of Mexico, whose name means the white woman, also called the sleeping woman. You can see her shape in the photo on the screen. She has a special place in my mind and my heart because during that hike, I felt so happy to be walking with my father. I still close my eyes and sense the smell of the nature after the rain, and I can hear the sound of our steps when walking. I remember the view of the Ista on my left. I also remember the feeling of being so amazed and scared, but safe at the same time. Although I have so many happy moments from when I was a child, that's one of the happiest memories I have. As you can see, I am not a child anymore, but in my heart, I am still a child. And this child has a name. I am Marco Gordillo. I am an electronic systems engineer with a master of science in information technologies. I work as a cyber recovery consultant for Dell Technologies. And I always relate the challenges I have had in my life to the mountains. Those are my magical place. So of course, after receiving my engineering degree, I had to do something special. Some people travel, some other people get married. For me, it was to climb the Ista. I had to get back to that magical place and let the child fulfill that dream. At that moment, I was not living near the Ista. It took me three years before I was able to travel to Mexico City and do it. But that was good because I did not have any real experience or knowledge about mountain climbing. My mind and my body were not ready for that challenge either. So I had three years to prepare. I wanted to endure it with a fortitude. At that time, I was living in Monterey, Mexico. That place is a paradise for rock climbing. So I started with that. I learned about the equipment. I had some training. Well, I had a lot of training and I got ready. Then in the year 2000, I had the opportunity to climb the Ista and get baptized in the summit as a mountaineer. I remember that ascent took me four days. The next year I climbed the east again and it took me three days. And the following year, it took me only two days. So that was the start of many other adventures in the mountains, including the highest peak in the American continent, the Aconcagua. But that's another moment still. So this trip, which I started when I was a child, is a never ending trip. I learned from that that the objective was not the summit of the mountain, but the process. That's the moment when you make friends, when you get to learn, and when you grow as a person. I think professional life is like mountain climbing. It is a process to go higher and get better. So I think this Toastmasters adventure is similar to my Easter trip. I've chosen the innovative planning path because I think I can apply its concepts to my work. This path culminates with a project like my work life with Dell, where I am participating in different customer projects. And Toastmasters is going to sharpen my climbing skills and help me reach my summits, the culmination of my projects. But mainly, I am here to enjoy the tree, to make friends, to learn and make mistakes. I'm here to practice my English and get those new skills that I can use in my work as well. I am happy to be here. And you are part of this trip too. Thank you for all that, my fellow Toastmasters. I expect to see you in the summit. Thank you.
So that's it. Wow, I'm really, I was, you're moving mountains with that speech, seriously. <laughs> that was incredible. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic, Marco. So glad to hear your story. So we'll give one minute on the clock again, and we'll do the private feedback for him. So one minute on the clock. Emphasis on private. I am so sorry, Bianca. When I sent it, I was like, what have I done? This is when Veronica drops the chat. Anyways, don't be like me. Send it privately. <laughs> All right, a minute. Perfect. And you can keep sending additional feedback uh, to both of our speakers. Thank you so much. Uh, but now it's time for us to move into our impromptu portion of the meeting, also known as table topics, where we'll give responses to various topics that have been selected, usually around a common theme. And this will help us work on our impromptu speaking skills without preparation. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back over to the Table Topics Master of the Day, which is Carmen. Hello, hello, how are you? Okay, so today's questions are more of a which would you choose? In life, we're always faced with choices and choices are not always necessarily good or bad. Sometimes it's just a matter of personal preference. It's what you do once you make those choices that determines whether that choice was a good choice or a bad choice. So who would like to go first? It's who would like to go first? Okay, I see Tresor. Okay, uh, here is your question. Would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors or go into the future and meet your great grandchildren? Thank you. So would, you, would I rather go into the past to meet my ancestor and maybe make some modifications so that the present will change? Or will I go into the future so that I can see my grandchild and uh, just uh, have a better idea to also make change into the present? So to me, these are both very interesting choices that are presented to me. And uh, thinking about it, I think that I would rather go into the past because the past is much more concrete as far as identifying what I have done that needs to be either maintained or needs to be changed. But into the future, it is still something that is not realized that I will be uh, making some probabilities or guessing and trying to figure out what I can do that hasn't happened that I'll be trying to make changes on. So if I'm given those two changes, I will definitely choose to go into the past in order to identify what I can focus on in order to make changes into the present. And then from there, I will have a different future compared to my past because if I don't make changes, I will just be repeating what has happened into the past and it will occur again into the future. So thank you, uh, Madam Table Topic for the question. You are welcome. Okay, the next person who would like to go next. Okay, Ava, would you rather have, well, let me see, I don't think I want that one. Let me pull up other choice. Okay, like the hardest like one, one for me. Do it. <laughs> or like this one. Would you rather be able to live a long, boring? Oh, and by the way, I did not. I pulled these questions from someone, so please don't think these are all my fabulous ideas. <laughs> but would you rather have a? Would you rather be able to live a long, boring life or a meaningful but short life? 
I'm sorry, my computer fuzz. Would I rather okay. live a long? Would you rather life? be able to live a long, boring life or a short but meaningful life? Ooh. Well, that's a conundrum. <laughs> I would argue a little bit that my life is a little boring. And I'm fine with that. I am not the adventurous type of person. I'm not Michelle. I don't go skydiving and do all these exciting things. But I do believe that my life is meaningful. So I would like to actually mix these two up. Slight deviation. Because I believe having a boring life, not really going out there. I'm a little risk adverse. I might not be the first person to get hit in the head with that volleyball. But I would like to try and I would like to still make a difference and be meaningful. Sometimes I have to have a little bit more fortitude to have that courage to do things. But with the people that I've met and the things that I get involved in, I think I can still make a difference. Take Toastmasters, for example. Being an area director was a little scary for me, but I'm able to make a difference And it might take a little bit more of my time. It might mean that what I'm doing in my personal life or even in my career might be a little bit more boring, but it's giving me this opportunity to help other people grow, which gives me a lot of fulfillment. So I think I would rather have a medium life between the short and the long, but make sure that I am still able to make a difference for those around me and help them all learn and grow but still be my little boring self and not go out and do things too terribly crazy. Maybe at some point I could join Marco on a little hike, but maybe a small mountain, not a really, really tall one, just to push myself a little bit and be a little adventurous. So overall being a little safe and boring, but still making a difference in others' lives is where I try to aim to be. Okay, I love that answer. Is there any, do we have time for anyone else, Josh? We do. Okay. I see a bunch yes, of Yes, we do. We do. Okay. I see a bunch of hit nods. About five more minutes. Okay. I see Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jenny. Yes. Would you rather be a genius and know everything or be amazing at any activity you tried? Hmm, that's a good question. Genius or amazing? Can I have both? Um, so, as Eva just mentioned, I am uh, maybe choosing in the go- in the golden way. Genius is very good, right? Uh, they can win in every uh, effort, and then uh, they can just spend less time uh, to do whatever they want. However, I do see some of the genius. They may not lead a happy life because they may be. Um, not very social, and then uh, they may be too proud. And then a lot of time, like, it's very important to learn from each other and then to know the teamwork. And then so know how to work with people and then still being genius. And then that's what be an awesome situation. On the other hand, be amazing in all the activities. That sounds very appealing, right? It's almost impossible. Uh, Everybody has its, I mean, their own talent and then Everybody say some people have the uh, talent in uh, music. Some people is good at language. Some people are very good at social, right? They can just like make friends like that. And then they can just new things quickly. Uh, so being amazing person is also very good. I would say like, if I can choose the combination of like being talented, maybe not to the genius level, but they can figure out the ways to do things. And then being also amazing at the activities that we like and do and then uh, that's will be the uh, perfect situation um, I believe the genius and then plus the all the social skills and then if they can uh, run a company or run a team I just again uh, take my family business for instance my mom is an entrepreneur she's eager to learn and then she's uh, very good at what she do and then she also know how to socializing with people know how to put the team together and then know how to reach people to get more business i think that's the best way thank you carmen thank you i appreciate your answer thank you thank you okay one more or are we yeah we have time for one more okay 
And then I apologize. I am probably going to post what everybody wrote. I think everybody's made time so far. And then I have to um, head on. I'm sorry, I have a one o'clock in the lab. So I've got to step away. Okay, is there one other person? All right, I see Ryan's hand, eager, excited. Okay, let's do this. Okay, would you rather end world hunger or stop crime all over the United States? So you have the option of world hunger, ending world hunger, or stopping crime all over the United States. Oh, man. These are not easy questions, Carmen. I didn't make them up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like at a surface level, you look at it and say, you could impact a whole lot more people if you were to end world hunger. So that sounds really attractive. But living in the U.S. and seeing... Some of the challenges that we've had over the past couple of years and how there's been more and more crime that feels that feels near and dear. And I see the US as a powerhouse country. And if we can get our own house in order, there's a lot of opportunity to do good in the world. So selfishly, I, I want to end crime in the US. Start, start, clean our own house, get things in order here, have people living more peacefully here so that we can contribute more individually and as a society to impact the rest of the world. The U.S. already does a lot of good in a lot of other countries, but think I think how much better could we do if we weren't fighting amongst ourselves and having places where people don't feel safe, where there's not enough police staffing, which is a problem we're running into all over the place. So I think we start there and clean our own house and have a bigger opportunity to impact the rest of the world. And that's my thought. Thank you. And is there, how are we, Josh? That's it? Yeah, that's pretty close to the time. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I will be posting what each person spoke about. And thank you again for participating. Yep. Thank you. It's kind of on that razor thin edge between time. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, yes, so votes will be going to the timer and awards uh, person, which will be Morale in this case. You would send him who you believe would be the best for both the speeches, table topics, and also the evaluators, which leads us nicely into the next portion of the meeting, which is the evaluation portion. And I meant to introduce the evaluators earlier, but we have two evaluators for our two speeches. Uh, the first of which will be Ryan Johnson, who will be evaluating Bianca's speech. So I will go ahead and kick it over to Ryan to give his evaluation for that speech. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Bianca, for your speech. I love your style, Bianca. I love your humor, your sarcasm, and your storytelling. You are, you are a fantastic storyteller. And I love how you drew us in with an interesting story that to be honest, it almost got to the point of like, well, how is this going to relate? Where does this tie in? But you did hook us in. So I thought it was a great start to the speech that did make that bridge and connection over to your leadership styles. One thing that you are really talented at is the words you use and the phrases. And I know you sometimes mention this, but I caught so many awesome phrases. You talked about things like how the girls traipsed over, how uh, having a luminous vision, how they shuffled like sand crabs. Um, I have another that I can't even read my writing, but there were several phrases that I love that just jumped out um, and were catchy. So really well done with that. You also were very animated and were able to drive your hand, your points home with your, your body language and your gestures. You did a really good use, use your hands really well. That's something I still struggle with, but I, that stood out to me. And I noticed you did a really great job with that. In kind of the meat of your speech, I thought you did a, a great job outlining your leadership style and showing how that applied in the example you gave and also to the situation with the girls that you were coaching. One thing that was one opportunity to tweak it a little bit that was a little distracting for me. You showed the different leadership styles. So it was the coaching. I'm going to forget the other two off the top of my head. And, and then you kind of walked through and you focused on coaching. I might have just taken and showed those three, but then it removed the other two from the screen because it got it did get a little bit distracting for me when you were showing the additional text that said, 
you know, here's the pros of coaching, here's the cons of coaching, but I was still kind of trying to read like, okay, what are the pros of and cons of these other two styles? And you didn't highlight those or focus on those. So it, it may have been good to have as like a talking point, but I don't know that it added to your speech to, to have the, those words there. One other potential opportunity for improvement is, and this is an area that I can improve on, it seemed like a lot of times you seem to be looking at a, like at a downward angle um, when you were speaking. And so maybe just having a little bit, a little bit different angle with your eyes would have been, uh, would have been helpful, but overall fantastic speech, great energy, great imagery. I love this, love this story that you shared. So thank you. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan, for that evaluation. That was great. And so we'll now move on to our second evaluator which is going to be Karthik, and he will be providing an evaluation for Marco, who gave his icebreaker speech today. So I will now kick it over to Karthik for the evaluation there. Thank you, Josh. Marco, please take a bow. What a fantastic speech. It was such an example of fortitude and passion. Such a terrific speech, Marco, for the first speech that is the icebreaker. If I were to you know, reflect on what I did two years ago on my first icebreaker speech, oh my man, there were so many good things that I learned. I wish I had seen your speech before going back then. Several great things that stood out to me. First, let's start with uh, the first things. First things first, your slides were very simple and easy to follow. And what made it awesome was your oratory skills, your storytelling skills complemented your slides so very well. Even though there was just one slide, we could avidly focus both on the slide as well as listen to the speech. You weren't repeating your slides, you weren't reading from the slides, but there was enough information for us to connect both the uh, visual as well as the speech. So fantastic, very well done. One thing that not many may have noticed was your body language. Oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure giving presentations to customers is probably one of your mainstays in your job because there was such, this was such, such an appropriate use of hand, hand gestures and your body posture. Um, I did learn, I did pick a few tips uh, from the way you delivered. However, I must also tell you that because you went on to share your screen, not many may have actually noticed it because probably people had already pinned the timer. So timer was probably on the corner of the screen, uh, but I did, they can make it a point to uh, you know pin you as well so that I can you know see, absorb your gestures. So very well done. Story selling skills, your narration, uh, your you know the passion with which you spoke, everything was awesome. What I would like to specifically highlight is as a non-native speaker, one of the things that we struggle with is accent. The other thing is the pacing. Some of us you know because we tend to think in our native tongue and we tend to translate. Sometimes we go too fast or too slow. On those two aspects, you excelled so very well because I had no issues at all understanding what each and every single sentence that you spoke. And what you also did was excellent use of metaphor where you connected the mountain to your real life. And that shows the grit and determination that you have been through the entire life. Overall, I think this was an excellent combination of both public, public speaking practice and a great reflection of your personal story. So I would say, you know, you did, mount, you did move mountains and I'm so excited, super excited and looking forward to your journey, journey with this Toastmasters Club. Thank you once again. And it was such a terrific speech. Thank you, Karni. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Karthik, for your second evaluation there. And everybody can take a few minutes to tally up the votes and, send those over to Morali so he can tabulate them. Um, I'd like to thank every, everybody for participating so far today. This has been a, a great uh, event and I think it would be good to go ahead and get our timers report if possible while those votes are actually getting counted up. We can go ahead and see if Morali can provide us with the timer report to see if everybody qualified and what the times were for that. Looks like he's. Oh, there he is. I, I'm still counting the votes. Yeah. But yes, everybody uh, qualified the time with respect to time. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. That's good to hear. Yeah, please send the votes over your way. Um, while those are still getting sent, we can go over to our grammarian Veronica's for the uh, Veronica for the grammarian report. Yes, you guys did such an amazing job today. I really caught very few uh, filler words. Uh, so what I'll do is let me, I'm like, ah, 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 I'm doing my own filler words. All the filler words you guys didn't do throughout today's uh, Toastmasters meeting, I'm doing them in just one minute. Anyways, so let me go through names, name by name. Uh, Bianca did not see any uh, filler words. Amazing job with that. Marco, you only had one hum, and then you had uh, one expression. You said that's another moment's time. I think you, you meant to say that's for another time or that's for another moment, but you like blend it in. Uh, it's a first speech, so sometimes, you know, it happens. And then sometimes we also think in Spanish, como, like para otro momento or something like that, you know, and then you get confused with like what the <laughs> real expression should be. So no biggie. Um, Trezor did not see any filler words, uh, Eva, non, Jenny, you had a few ahs in between uh, certain sentences. You had about uh, three to four of them. So just something to watch out for. Ryan, you just had a one sentence restart where you said you were, you were kind of twice. So it's like, I think you were going to start the sentence and then you kind of went back to it. Uh, during your that was during the evaluation. Now, during the actual table topic, you were perfect. No no filler words. Uh, Karthik, amazing job using the word of the day. Uh, kudos to you. <laughs> and with that, yep, that's the grammarian's report for today. Did I miss anybody else who used the day of the word, like the word of the day? I know I caught Karthik's because it was very obvious, but if you used it and I didn't catch it, let me know. Let me know so I can give you bonus. Oh, Eva used it. Eva, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I promise. I Oh my gosh. Marco used it too? You guys, okay, no, okay, you know what? I'm gonna auto fire myself. So yeah, so okay, Eva, Marco, Karthik, amazing job using the word of the day. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you so much for the grammar. Oh, and Bianca as well, you guys, everybody use the word of the day. Okay, sorry, okay. See, this is why I'm grammarian, so I can like practice my listen, my active listening <laughs> skills. Anyways, thanks. <laughs> No problem, don't fire yourself, keep working on it. I don't believe I use the word of the day, but I know I use quite a few filler words. So working on that, I'll give a just another general evaluation before we reveal the awards and announcements today. So it's my second week in a row of doing Toastmasters role. And I think it's a very surreal experience. Not, I don't believe nervous would be a proper word for me, but it's a lot more responsibility than I guess I imagine just because if it wasn't, Obvious, I do have multiple screens set up, and I know I need to work on my posture a little bit and camera angles. Um, is the way that Fed is set up, my laptop is over to the side with the camera, so I don't have a like mounted camera. Uh, something I'm probably going to look at getting, but in case you notice my angle being at a certain way, that's the docking stations aren't that easy to move around here since I'm in the facility, but nevertheless, I need to be able to take better eye contact. So that's just for my own learning. I think it stands out more when you're a Toastmaster and you're delegating the meeting. So, and I'm also not a huge script guy, so I wanna make it go with the flow, keep the mood light. This is a perfect break in the middle of chaos, essentially, but in good, good chaos. And I'm thankful this team has really been a family to me. And since I started this club, I started in this club about two weeks after getting hired. So it almost immediately jumped out to me and kept me something. Uh, something I very much look forward to. So those are just my thoughts, but the speeches were fantastic and I'm really excited to see where this club continues to move forward. So awesome. And get off my soapbox now, but those are just some thoughts and some feedback for myself, honestly, and everyone else did a great job. And look, looking forward to hopefully our newer guests who joined today, the, the ones who had been here a couple of times or are newer, they can hopefully get plugged in and with some additional resources to uh, continue to be fed by this organization. So now we'll go ahead and pass it back over to Morali for the awards presentation. Sure. Uh, before that, I would also like to give the time report, if that's okay. Um, so uh, Bianca finished it in seven minutes, 25 seconds. Marco, four minutes, 57 seconds. Uh, for evaluation, Ryan did at two minutes, 30 seconds. Karthik, two minutes, 47 seconds. 
And for table topics, Tresser, one minute, 27 seconds. Ava, one minute, 45 seconds. Jenny, one minute, 51 seconds. And Ryan, one minute, 15 seconds. So everybody had qualified. And let me share my screen for the awards. Hope you all can see my screen. Okay, cool. Right. Best speaker award. <laughs> Yay! Marco. Woo! Well done, Marco. So Ava comes off mute and tells everybody else to come off mute. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Table topics goes to hey, Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> And best evaluator goes to Karthik. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good job, Karthik. Ooh. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that was very exciting. Agreed with all the comments and feedback. So very moved by all of the speeches and everybody who participated today. And I will open up the floor a little bit more for, I guess Ava would be next in command if she had any more announcements, but any, if the guests, if any of our newer guests had any feedback or anybody else had any feedback, we can also open the floor to that as well. So. Yeah, let's do, if any guests want feedback, I do have one announcement, so I just need a minute at the end, but if uh, either of our guests would like to provide any feedback today, we'd always love to hear it. I would like to say um, really enjoyed um, everybody's speeches and uh, what I really liked is how everybody kept up with the time. Um, you all are doing an awesome job with that. So um, thank you. Glad to have you, Michael. Is this your first time? It's my second time. Oh, your second time. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. Anyone else have any feedback before we go into announcements? Great, then let me proceed. Okay, everybody, so I know we've talked about it a few times, but all members of Toastmasters and even guests, if you would like, you can actually attend our district conference. The conference is next weekend, so not this coming, but next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It'll be Saturday and Sunday in person at the Embassy Suites, North Austin. So you can actually go in person if you live here and you want to see people in person, you can go to the conference. There is a payment. You do have to pay to register. I believe it's 150. I registered back when it was still a sale. So I'm not 100% sure, but I will look that up and I'll put the link into our Teams chat. But you can go and register. And also there's an online option. So there will be some, yeah, Karthik has to drive down, totally. There are some options for online. Not all of the education sessions will be broadcasted hybrid or on Zoom, but some will, including my Zoom session that I'm doing on Friday night. So there are also education sessions Friday night that are online, and I'm actually leading one. So if anyone wants to, I don't know, learn more about Zoom or help me prepare something about Zoom, <laughs> that'll be great. Look forward to that. And then for all of the officers and any leaders in our club who would like to attend, there's an area council meeting where all of the officers, leaders, mentors, anyone who would actually like to attend, you don't even have to be an officer, are invited to get together with the other clubs from our area and our division for a meeting on May 10th, 7 to 9 p.m. Central. So I will send that out to the officers and to the mentors, but like I said, anyone is able to attend that as well. So those are the two announcements we have. Other than that, please do keep signing up in our agenda, in our sign-up sheet for your roles. We have, if I'm looking correctly, we do have an evaluator spot next week for Ryan's speech that is open. Jen, we already have your evaluator as Michelle. Lauren's gonna be our table topics master, but we do still need a grammarian. And then for the week after, we have Karthik's speech and Brian's speech, and we do need two evaluators. So please make sure to go and sign up. The next open speech slot is not until June 1st. So if you're even considering giving your speech, you might wanna get on the schedule. We are filling up rather quickly. 
So please get your speech on the schedule. We want to make sure that we can do that. And if you have any questions about signing up for a role, what exactly do you need to do for a role or what speech, if you need speech brainstorming, you can reach out to me and you can also reach out to your mentor who can help you with that. Any questions on anything? Yeah, super quick question about the conference yes. next weekend. Yes. So there's the in-person, in-person, you know, embassy suite situation, but mm -hmm. Can people attend online? Is there a separate cost for yes. online? Okay, that's a tiered package, yeah. I guess. There's a different package for online. So the, I think it's $50 for the online uh, access. Okay, good deal. I'd love to see you guys online. And if you can't make it, I do understand that that is money that you have to spend. And sometimes not everyone wants to spend more money. Uh, I do believe some of these education sessions will be redone later in the year as part of our continuing education program, but they might not be as cool as they are next weekend. Just want to let you guys know. Cool. All right. Well, if that's it, then uh, as our reigning next level officer, then I will just gavel us out with my panda pen, gavel, gavel, uh, and we are closed for the day. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you, everybody, Bella. for joining. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you all. Bye. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye.